Yo, dude, why are you drinking so much milk? Uh, for strong bones, obviously. What? Didn't you hear about that review in the New England Journal? Man, there's some mind-blowing stuff in there. Come on, I'll show you. Yeah, nah, science, really? <laughs> well, honestly, I've got nothing else going on. So, yeah, science it is. Man, I'm telling you, you won't regret it. Check this out. Milk has two natural functions. It nourishes young mammals and it promotes their growth. And that's why milk in general contains all essential nutrients for that mammal as well as multiple anabolic hormones. To increase milk production though, cows have been bred to produce higher levels of IGF-1. And they're pregnant for most of the time they are milked, which greatly increases levels of progestins, estrogens and other hormones in milk. Ah, okay, so there are naturally occurring sex hormones in milk and breeding cows increases their concentration. Spot on. And you know these BCAA supplements that are sold for muscle growth, right? <laughs> yeah, man, I sure do. Uh, yeah, well, uh, BCAAs are actually found quite abundantly in milk. Man, consuming them further increases plasma IGF-1 concentrations. And one of them, called leucine, specifically activates the mTOR pathway, which promotes cell replication and inhibits apoptosis. Ah, uh, okay, is that why people who drink milk grow quick and taller? Exactly. However, this not only predispositions you to become the next basketball star, it's actually associated with lower risks of cardiovascular disease, but then again with higher risks of many cancers, pulmonary emboli, and hip fractures. Okay, more fractures from growing tall, but if you just drink enough milk, your bones will be fine, right? Yeah, you know, that paradigm has actually shifted. Paradoxically, consuming more milk and calcium is associated with more hip fractures. Now, this is a correlation and might not be causal, but low dairy consumption is clearly compatible with low rates of hip fracture. Ah, so what you're saying is you can have milk but you don't need it for strong bones right yeah you got it yeah okay that's not common knowledge though i mean where do we even get the current recommendations from well it's interesting that you ask that because even though the recommendations seem to be set in stone the us for example bases their recommendations on quite short studies lasting only two to three weeks and assessing calcium balance in just 155 adults well that doesn't sound like good empirical data to me empirical data yeah dude you're right and even though these studies suggested that we need just about 700 milligrams per day, the official recommendations are still set at 1000 milligrams in many countries such as the US and Germany. <laughs> Empirical, yeah, thanks man. That's actually my new favorite word, but what about newer data? Well, there are many more studies on this topic, and the overall evidence does neither support a benefit of higher dairy consumption for hip fracture prevention, nor in adolescence for the prevention of fractures later in life. And by the way, that's also true concerning bone mineral density and even for the use of calcium supplements. Okay, that's super interesting. Hang on, but surely I heard somewhere that milk is good for weight loss. Meta-analysis of 29 randomized controlled trials and no effect of milk or other dairy foods on body weight. Again, that's true for adults and for children. What's interesting though is that low-fat milk does not appear to have any advantages over whole milk when it comes to weight control. Whole milk, I don't drink it anyway because of heart disease. Well, that can be a good call depending on what you exchange it for. For example, compared to red meat, both whole and low-fat milk have been shown to decrease the risk for coronary heart disease and stroke. Compared instead to fish and nuts, milk showed a higher risk. And the same is true for dairy fat consumption when compared to polyunsaturated or vegetable fat. Oh, I'm so hungry and I don't want to drink that milk any longer. Honestly, I think my blood sugar is low. Oh yeah, well in that case, let's talk about diabetes. Up until now, the relationship of milk intake to the risk of type 1 diabetes remains unclear. Concerning type 2 diabetes, there is no or only a weak association with lower risk. But then again, compared to sugar-sweetened beverages, the risk is lower. Compared, for example, to coffee, the risk is higher. Ah uh, yeah, your coffee video, man, that was really funny. Y you know what? Instead of a movie, I think I'm gonna watch this tonight. I'm glad you liked it. And just like coffee, milk influences cancer risk. The strongest evidence exists for a higher risk of prostate, endometrial and breast cancer. And with the increase of plasma IGF-1 from milk consumption, there is a plausible mechanism for that as well. Reduced risks have been shown for colorectal cancer, potentially owing to milk's high calcium content. As a matter of fact, calcium supplements have the same effect and milk is not the only dietary source of calcium. Yeah, and in your video on calcium, 
You said that we need protein for better calcium absorption, so what about the protein in milk? Dude, yeah, you're a good observer. Concerning all-cause mortality, compared to other common protein sources, milk performs similarly to unprocessed meat, poultry and fish, better than eggs and processed meat, but worse than plant-based protein. That's all great information, but you know what I'm even more worried about than protein? The environment. Likewise. Here's the connection to protein, though. In general, the effects of dairy on greenhouse gas production and climate change, water use and pollution, and antibiotic resistance are large, potentially 5 to 10 times greater per unit of protein compared to plants. So limiting dairy production could make a major contribution toward reaching international greenhouse gas targets. So tell me, is there anyone who should consume dairy and if so, how much? Well, dairy is very nutrient dense, so in regions of the world where diet quality and energy intake are low, milk can be beneficial. However, all these nutrients can be obtained from other sources. So in society where nutrition is generally adequate, the risks of consuming dairy outweigh the benefits and the appropriate intake for adults is somewhere between zero to two servings per day. Do you also enjoy needlessly changing your clothes and speaking to yourself about scientific stuff in an empty room? Well, what are you waiting for? Subscribe, comment and hit that notification bell. And for more great information on nutrition, follow us on our social media profiles. So, so see you, you next time. time.